Everything's solved, Gert. Justice of God, the law of God's fulfilled, satisfied by another person. Dev is the bride of Christ to be. She's a Christian before she gets saved. Notice her back is turned to the Savior. Arms folded, I want nothing to do with you, and disgusted. Why? Because this is what she, and she was. This is what you were. That was you. That's why I spent so much time here. Yeah, but we got the problem solved, right, Michael? Uh, the wrath of God's been pacified. It's free to everybody who believes. We got a problem. By nature, you're hostile to God. And everything in you, Paul said, stinks. Well, wait a minute, Michael. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? That everyone believing in him would not perish but have everlasting life. God sends him. Amen? Here he comes, holding his arms out. Matthew 11, 28. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. Right? Was Jesus sincere when he said that? Sure he was. But guess what? The same Jesus who said that also said, but no one has the ability to come to me. The Greek there is u dunatai, where we get our English word dynamite, no ability. So here, well, Jesus can't be sincere then because, no, no, no. He didn't change at all. He can't stop being who he is, calling out the sinners, even though we have stopped being what we are because of sin. He still keeps being who he is. And there are even liberals who say that God can't demand perfect righteousness because we, are, we can't do it. God ain't going to stop being who he is just because you stop being who you are. So what happens? we got a problem here. Everything's been provided for and satisfied and done, but we can't even take the medicine. Jesus said that nobody has the ability to come to me. Udunatai, no dynamite, unless my Father who sent me enables him, gives it to him, John 6, 65, and draws them to me, John 6, 44. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says that the natural man, a person who's not a Christian, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness to him. Remember, beloved, it's a hostile nature. And then it says, neither can they do so. Udunatai, no ability. Romans 8.7 and 8. It says the mind of the flesh, it doesn't set itself on the things of God because it's hostile to God. Neither can it do so. Udunatai. John 14, 17. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, whom the world, that's you and me before we're saved, right? Whom the world cannot receive. Udunatai. I'm an evangelist. I wish I would have known this in my early years. Uh, how does anyone get saved? It doesn't happen unless this happens. You thought it was all you. You couldn't even take the cure. Unless Father came on the day you got saved, here he comes. He sent you his son and you couldn't even take the medicine because by nature you hated him. Oh no, God was a God seeker. No, you weren't. Romans 3 says, no one seeks after God. If you started feeling you were seeking God, guess what, beloved? That's because God was seeking you. Give it up. Give up your pride and let grace save you. So what happened on the day you got saved? Here comes the Father. Jesus is calling you through. It could be a parent, a relative, a friend, a stranger, a television show, a track, you name it. Here comes the Father. On the day you got saved, he enables you to believe. Philippians 1.29, it says it's been granted to you to believe. And then what happened? Here's the enabling by the Father. And then, no man comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. That's why when Jesus was talking about the banquet of the Father, come and get it! I have a banquet. It's all free. It's the banquet of my son. Come and get it! It's all yours. It's free. Come. They all alike began to make excuse. They didn't want to come because they couldn't come. So what happened on the day you got saved? 
You were dead in trespasses and sin. Remember, this is what we were. And then Ephesians 2, 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy. You see, beloved, when you're a sinner, you don't need God's money. You need his mercy. That's one of the many reasons I can't stand the prosperity gospel. You don't need his money. You need his mercy. So what happened? But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive. Oh, no, Gertie, I managed to get my hand out of the grave and let Jesus... No, you didn't. You were dead. If you moved your hand, you're not dead. So on the day you got saved, beloved, you didn't... None of us knew this was happening. You just heard the gospel and you responded by his... So what happened? Father, God sent Jesus over to you, son. Notice the cross on the golden shovel. Dig him out. Jesus is still raising the dead, ain't he? Lazarus didn't do one thing when Jesus resurrected him. He just received it. You see, that's why, beloved, it has to be sola gratia. If it isn't, you don't have a chance. Not a chance. I pray that your lava lamps are flowing, that they're hot now. You're seeing in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says that God chose the weak things, the foolish things, the despised things. God did the choosing. Why? So that nobody boasts. Ah, glad to be here, God, in heaven. So glad I saw the gospel was the best way to go, and I chose it. Praise me. There'll be none of that in heaven. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, It's because of him, God the Father, that you are in Christ Jesus. And I'll try to stop. It's hard to stop preaching about grace. Hang on. How many times in John chapter 17 when Jesus was talking about his disciples, he referred to them as those whom the Father has given me. You, as a Christian, are a gift to Jesus from the Father. And if Father hadn't given you, you'd never come. You wouldn't want to and you couldn't. But Father came. All those whom the Father has given me, John 6, 37, will come to me. That's why it says in Ephesians 1, 4, God has chosen you before the foundation of the world. Yeah, he saw what I'd do. Yeah, and it turned his stomach and he still chose you. It says he chose you to be holy, not because he saw anything in you that was holy. He's not sharing any of his glory with us. You don't want him to. Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but... I have chosen you. And let me tell you something, and I have to encourage myself all the time with this, on those many days in my poor wife, on those many days when I feel like he's going to leave me, and he should, and I just, Jesus, I can't beat this thing. And I feel condemned, and it's over. I've crossed the line. Wait a minute. When God chose you before the foundation of the world, he knew what he was getting and he still chose to choose you. Father, thank you for your people. I thank you, Father. They're resonating, Lord, with this because they, like me, are desperate for it, and we can't live without it.